welcome to Rule Breaker. It's time to take a look at the Space Aurons, the, the Mahaktagene Sorcerer faction for Prophecy of Kings expansion Twilight Imperium 4th edition. Um, these guys are the big bad, they're the main baddie in this expansion at least, in the lore. Um, described as gene sorcerers, mad tyrants, kings. Um, they are the scary bad guys and you'll see why very very shortly. Okay the Mahakt, what do they start with? Well they've got two technologies that come with Prophecy of Kings, they don't have any of the base technologies at the start of the game. Um, they begin the game with biostims and predictive intelligence. So starting with biostims, um, you may exhaust this card at the end of your turn to ready one of your planets that has a technology speciality or one of your other technologies. Yeah, so this is like a little bit of flexibility for getting some more resources in um, or potentially um, refreshing one of your technologies. Just a little bit of flexibility um, that they're going to like quite a lot. Um, and then predictive intelligence, which reads at the end of your turn, you may exhaust this card to redistribute your command tokens. When you cast votes during the agenda phase, you may cast three additional votes. If you do and the outcome you voted for is not resolved, exhaust this card. Um, so. Uh, wow, a uh, chance to redistribute your command tokens right from the very start is awesome. Um, if you want to have a little bit of flexibility at the start of the game, there you go, predictive intelligence. Uh, make a very, very well thought out first turn and you could have quite the dominant first round because of that. As for starting units, uh, also no slouch with the, uh, the stuff to get at the start. A dreadnought right at the beginning, a carrier, a cruiser, two fighters and three infantry and these infantry are crimson legionnaires which we'll see uh, when we flip the board over in a moment um, basically they're, they're guys you kind of almost want to die to get more stuff um, so let's take a look at them on the other side of the board and here is Ixth the Mahakt home system um, a three resources five influence planet which is pretty fantastic um with those boosted up um infantry their different ability um not a lot of pieces of plastic on the table but you'll find it's pretty decent starting setup um all together particularly with these resources and influence to get you moving all right let's take a look at these guys in more detail uh needle is their quote that's ominous um so They've got three major abilities. Um, they sort of link into one another, as you'll see here. The first one is Edict. When you win a combat, place one command token from your opponent's reinforcements in your fleet pool if it does not already contain one of that player's tokens. Other player's tokens in your fleet pool increase your fleet limit, but cannot be redistributed. So, is this as good as it sounds? I think it is, actually. Um, so you are not only taking away one of your opponent's command tokens essentially for the rest of the game um, you're using it to boost up your fleet size so naturally the higher the player count the more powerful this is and the more enemies you're going to make as a result right so um, these are finite you only have so many of these losing one can actually be a big deal in some games um, so if you're losing one and you're boosting someone else's fleet with it, that feels really sore. I don't like that. That's 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 really rough. Uh, so um, try to avoid the Mahakt Gene Sorcerers if you can, or win the combats if you get into a fight with them, essentially. Um, and that's not going to happen for the whole game, so be prepared to uh, deal with this steamroller of a thing that's going on. Um, their Imperia ability um, says... While another player's command token is in your fleet pool, you can use the ability of that player's commander if it is unlocked. So again, another reason why you want to avoid these guys if you can. If they have your command token, they can use your commander um, if it's unlocked. Uh, so that's very scary. Your commander is usually one of your most powerful things in your faction. Um, and the Mahakt being able to do that is... It opens a whole host of crazy different possibilities and um, making them the most unpredictable force in the whole game um, and then just to kind of tie that off a little bit and make it clearer they have a semi ability um, hubris which is during setup purge your alliance promissory note 
um, other players cannot give you their alliance promissory notes. So just to show you what you're missing, um, new in Prophecy of Kings is the alliance promissory note. Essentially, if you get one of these, you can use the commander ability of your allied uh, friend. So it's very similar to the Imperia thing, except that the two players who are doing it have to agree to do it. The Mahak just come along and do it anyway. Um, so the Mahak can't have friends, everybody else can, but the Mahak don't care because they can manipulate your commanders anyway. And that's their thing. Um, what else have they got going on here? Uh, three commodities, pretty low standard, um, unlikely to be making a lot of trades because everybody's going to be afraid of you, um, but at least you've got options if, if available. The commodities do come into play a bit when we talk about the Crimson Legionnaire as well, so the fact that you can have three is something to, to be aware of. Um, so um, I guess speaking of them, the Crimson Legionnaire, your infantry units, um, these guys here, they have the ability after this unit is destroyed, gain one commodity or convert one of your commodities to a trade good. Uh, so this is like a little engine building thing that you can do where you can build two infantry uh, Crimson, Crimson Legionnaires for one, you could destroy one of them, um, you could gain a commodity and then you could, or you could turn a commodity into a trade good. So a slow build, a slow building um, steamroller thing again with them if you want to do it almost encourages you to um, sacrifice your own guys to start accumulating trade goods um, and commodities along the way to them. So yeah, weird, very different. Um, the only other thing similar to that is like the Yin Brotherhood's whole self self hurting thing. Um, this is the only thing remotely like that in the game that I can think of. So a very different take on the infantry units. And aside from that, your units are pretty basic. The space dock all the way through to the cruiser and the war zone are the same. But let's take a little look at your flagship. All right, the Mahakt flagship, the Arvacon Rex. Um, and this one has the ability that reads, during combat against an opponent whose command token is not in your fleet pool, apply plus two to the results of this unit's combat rolls. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, um, what that basically means is that if you don't have somebody's uh, counter, you want it because it increases your fleet limit as we described earlier um, with the Imperial ability. Um, but also once you've got it, um, your flagship uses this stats as normal. Uh, normally it's eight cost, hitting on fives with two dice, one move and three capacity. But if you're hunting somebody down who um, hasn't um, hasn't been lost to combat with you yet, um, essentially this plus two means that their combat is like a three, which is the same um, die face that you need for hitting with a warsome. So making the Arvicon Rex the joint most powerful um, combat unit in the game, essentially. Um, has sustained damage as well, can take a hit, um, which is useful, um, but such a mighty um, combat unit. So there you go, another scary thing about the Mahakt Gene Sorcerers. All right, before we look at their um, racial tech, one of the racial techs is actually um, an upgraded unit type, which is the Crimson Legionnaire 2. Um, essentially exactly the same as an Infantry 2, um, just carrying over the ability here of the commodity and the trade good. So it reads, after this unit is destroyed, gain one commodity or convert one of your commodities to a trade good. And then like an infantry two, then place the unit on this card. At the start of your next turn, place each unit that is on this card on a planet you control in your home system. So basically an infantry two um, with the seven combat instead of the eight, um, but keeping the um, commodity and trade good ability. And their racial technology, the other one, is Genetic Recombination. And that reads, you may exhaust this card before a player casts votes. That player must cast at least one vote for an outcome of your choice, or remove one token from their fleet pool and return it to their reinforcements. Uh, so, sort of mind control, I guess. Like, manipulation, um, exhausting this card, making someone vote one way that you want them to vote. So, yeah, that's very... Very, very annoying. Like a little puppet master controlling everybody at the table. Devastating stuff. 
Um, if you, for some reason, want to make friends with somebody, you have a promissory note of your own, um, which is called the Scepter of Dominion, which is ominous enough uh, all by itself, which reads at the start of the strategy phase. And again, this is an ability that you're giving to somebody else in exchange for something, um, and they will have the ability. Choose one non-home system that contains your units. Each other player who has a token on the Mahakt player's command sheet places a token from their reinforcements in that system. Then return this card to the Mahakt player. So kind of like a mini diplomacy strategy card, you can make sure that nobody flies into a particular system, which is pretty powerful, actually. Um, but it's probably going to take quite a lot for you to want to give this away. Um, but it's a very nice bargaining chip. Um, making you this weird conundrum of everybody being afraid of you but also wanting to be your friend but again being super terrified of you um, mad absolutely crazy powerful um, so definitely if you're playing the Mahakt Gene Sorcerers you're starting to see that everybody's going to be watching you the whole time because you're a colossal evil tyrant all right, and now looking at their additional units board here, their leaders and mechs, um, they have an agent called J. Mirkan, they have a commander called Ilna Viroset, they have a hero called Aeroshir Hour, and they have a mech called Star Lancer, which is a lovely name, totally different to the others. Um, okay, so let's take a look at these one by one. The agent um, has the ability, when you would spend a command token during the secondary ability of a strategic action, you may exhaust this card to remove one of the active player's command tokens from the board and use it instead. Uh, so this is cool. This is diverse in a lot of ways. Um, taking someone else's token um, off the board um, is freeing up any ships that they have there. It's also allowing them to activate that system again if they want to um, but it is saving you a token in the process to do an extra uh, secondary ability on a strategic um, action um, this one is probably not worth it every time I mean if you can afford the token yourself it's probably better than taking someone else's away unless it's in an inconsequential system miles away from any action or an empty system that someone just explored or something like that and um, but the utility of it is is there it's an option whenever you're low on counters and I think it's pretty good um, now onto the commander which unlocks when you have two other factions command tokens in your fleet pool so naturally uh, this is easier to unlock when you're playing against more players um, so once you've got that you flip it over and you get the ability during your tactical actions you can activate systems that contain your command tokens if you do return both command tokens to your reinforcements and end your turn so uh, so let's take a look at this at the board all right so let's say um the mahak player here is in yellow um and that they have activated this system before in this particular round um, and because it's the Mahak, they probably have some enemy counters in their fleet supply already there. Um, the poor embers and buddies uh, getting beaten up here in this particular example. Um, so what this commander's ability allows you to do um, is... It says, during your tactical actions, you can activate systems that contain your command tokens. If you do, return both command tokens to your reinforcements and end your turn. So essentially what that lets you do is um, you can activate the system again from your, your pool like this, take the two of them away and they're both gone. Um, why is that good? Well, essentially that means that you can use another token to do something with that system later, or you can activate somewhere and move those ships um, out of there, which you normally can't do because they would have been stuck in the system due to the command token already being there so again a lot of flexibility it's expensive having to spend essentially kind of like three tokens really and um, to use that system again um, but in a pinch could be really really good really powerful and the hero which unlocks just like every other hero after you've scored three objectives uh, turns into the action benediction which reads, move all units in the space area of any system to an adjacent system that contains a different player's ships. Space combat is resolved in that system. Neither player can retreat or resolve abilities that would move their ships. Then purge this card. So it's like, um, it has to be an adjacent system, but you can just move in straight away. Um, a fight happens that can't be ignored. 
um, and abilities that move shifts can't happen so it's like a fight on your terms essentially um, maybe this is the kind of thing you would do to claim Mechatol Rex or it's something that you would do to take someone's home system maybe um, it's a once per game action because you purge the card at the end um, but it could be a game changer so use it wisely my friends and last but not least, Star Lancer, the mech. Um, standard enough, two costs, six combat, sustained damage. Um, with the ability, after a player whose command token is in your fleet pool activates this system, you may spend their token from your fleet pool to end their turn. They gain that token. So another use for um, our poor Ember's friend who's been getting beaten up all game, their token. Um, if you have that, well, it can be any faction obviously, um, sitting around. If they attack you, you can say, here, you can have this token back, no one anymore, and their uh, turn is over. And you've just said, nope. Which is also pretty damn strong. Um, so that is the Mahakt Gene Sorcerers. Naturally, they're one of the most powerful uh, pound for pound factions in the game. Um, but you know, they're not unassailable. I think they're really, really strong. The whole thing with the command tokens um, and the fleet pool and the being able to say no with the mech is great. Um, their super flagship um, is really good when they're hunting you down, hitting on threes. Um, it's awesome, really, really good. This engine of getting um, commodities and trade goods is super good. Um, but this all kind of comes at a cost, right? Like, everyone's after you. You're kind of coming into the game with an advantage. Um, and as we'll see in future videos when we go through the new um, leaders and mechs and abilities of um, the, the original um, base games factions, um, everybody's brought new toys to the game to, to deal specifically with these um, monsters and the, the other new guys. Um, so um, if you're playing as the Mahakt, you're going to get ganged up on. If you're playing against them, just keep an eye on them the whole time. They're a yeah, total beast and with that that is the end of our little series on the new factions in the prophecy of kings expansion from twilight imperium um, i hope you've enjoyed these mad ramblings of mine um over the last week or so it's been an absolute pleasure making these videos for you i hope you've um learned a thing or two about them all i know i've learned a thing about the vul wraith cabal in particular um and it's been a joy making them for you um, what I will say is if you have enjoyed um, there's more stuff coming um, please subscribe to the channel it really helps you're doing me a huge favour if you do that it encourages me to keep going um, and it helps to grow the channel so please do that if you haven't done it before um, much uh, great appreciation if you can do that um, so we'll see you again very soon for leaders and mechs for all the other factions in the game uh, coverage of other games lots of other little funs of bits and pieces um, and more fun things on the channel so thanks very much for watching this has been Rulebreaker for Prophecy of Kings Twilight Imperium good luck <laughs>